Hello everyone and welcome to a little Unity tutorial about some tricks to give life to your game objects, such as your game collectibles. You know, the collectibles, that's all those little coins and question marks and backpacks and other gems that video games just love to have us look for during hours. Sometimes they're great and they just further deepen the lore, at other times they're a bit of an artificial way to extend the lifetime of your game. But in any case, if you want your players to actually try and grab those candies, you better make them appealing. And to do this, there is a super simple trick. Have them move. It seems almost too basic, but it's true. Our eyes are just caught by anything that jiggles or pops or jumps. So today, let's have a quick look at how to give your collectibles a bit of life by animating them. To begin with, let's have a look at a nice and easy to use tool, the Unity Animations. You can find them by going to the menu bar at the top, then to Animation and Animation window. Once you open this window and dock it somewhere in your layout, you'll see that it contains a timeline and some buttons to interact with the animation like Play, Pose, Go Back and more. On the left, we have an empty column that doesn't look like much for now. That's because at the moment I haven't got any actual object to animate, so Unity can't show me anything. Now for example, let's say I drag in this fancy holocube model I prepared. For now, if I run my game, it's just standing there, which is kind of boring. Instead, I want to give it an animation so that it rotates continuously. To do this, I just need to select my object in the hierarchy and then click on this button in the animation window to create a new animation for it. I can now pick where I want this animation to be stored in my assets and how it should be named. Then, back in my animation window, you see that the left column now contains a new button to add a property. Basically, the idea is that we're gonna tell Unity which property we want to animate on the object that uses this animation, like its position, rotation, scale, or even the value in one of its components. By putting some keyframes in this row of the timeline, we'll then be able to give it some specific values at some specific times. And for the in-between frames, Unity will just take care of interpolating between those values. Ok, so let's start by saying that at the beginning, meaning at frame 0, the cube should have this initial null rotation. All I have to do is click on the Add Property button, go down to my Transform and then Rotation, and click the plus sign to add this property to my animation. Unity automatically inserts two keyframes, one at frame 0 and one at frame 60, both with my current value of a null rotation. This means that I now have a quote-unquote animation of one second, with just a fixed rotation of zero. But of course it doesn't really look like an animation. What we need instead is to change the value at frame 60 to 360 degrees on the y-axis. This way, our cube will do a complete turn in one second. And then come back to our animation window and click this little button to insert a keyframe that replaces the previous one. If I scrub between my two keyframes, I now have a basic rotation of my object. However, if I play this clip in its entirety, I see that there are two problems. One, it is way too fast. And two, there's a strange slowdown and speed up at regular intervals. To solve the overall speed problem, the trick is just to make the animation longer. So I'll just zoom out a bit and drag my end keyframe to something like 5 seconds. Of course, feel free to play around with this in your own project to change the speed of the animation. For the acceleration and deceleration issue, the culprit is actually the default animation curve. Let me explain. If you click on the Curves tab here at the bottom, you'll get another representation of your animation, where rather than the keyframes being just diamonds in a row, there are actually lines in between each keyframe, and you see that those keyframes are at different heights. This mode shows us the exact evolution of our value from its start to end point. And you can notice two things. First, there are actually three curves, because the rotation is composed of three components, the X, the Y and the Z. But of course, since we're only changing the Y value here, 
only the y curve shown in yellow evolves between two different values. The x and z curves are just flat and equal to zero all the time. The second thing to note is that the y curve is not a straight line. Instead, it starts off with a gentle slope, then moves up quicker and finally goes back to a nicer slope at the end. This is exactly why the speed of our cube is going up and down. The slope here is the speed of our cube, so when it is small, the cube moves fairly slowly, and when it is high, like in the middle, the cube rotates way faster. To get a continuous looping rotation, what we want is actually to use a simple straight line so that the speed never increases or decreases. We want it to be just constant, like this constant slope on a straight line. To change this, I just have to select all of my keyframes, for example by pressing Ctrl or Command A, and then right-clicking and choosing both tangents linear. This modifies both the slope that is just after the start frame and the slope that is just before the end frame and makes this nice straight line. Now if I play my animation again, you see that I get a cube rotating endlessly in a catchy loop. Ok, that's pretty cool, but another interesting animation to grab the player's attention is to have an object hover, or in other words, move up and down slightly over time. So let's see how we can add this second movement to our cube. This time we're gonna do it via code. You can of course totally make it using the animation tools we just saw, but this way we'll look at another more devy method. The key thing we're gonna use here is a sinus. If you're not too familiar with this, in short, it's a function that creates waves like this. One of its important features is that it is periodic, meaning that it gives the same value over and over again, no matter how big the input is. This value always oscillates between minus 1 and plus 1. So, typically, if you input the time over here and say that the sin is the y position of your object, then you see that you just created an infinite oscillating hovering movement for your collectible that will bring it up and down as the game time increases. Luckily, it's just as straightforward in practice. We just have to create a new c -sharp script in our project, put it on our cube and then edit it. I'll remove the start method because we won't be ending it and I'll do the scene computation in the update. I simply need to use the matf.sin built-in function and give it the current time of the game, which is time.time, .time, and then take the result to put it as the current y position for my object. If I restart the game, I now have both my rotation and hovering. But this vertical movement isn't great and it collides with the ground because of how wide it is. So let's make sure we have a way of controlling that. Back in our script, we're going to expose an amplitude float parameter. And we're going to multiply our sinus value by this amplitude. This way, our value won't be stuck between minus 1 and plus 1, but between minus our amplitude and plus our amplitude. Since the value is exposed, we can tweak it in-game to see what best fits our game, and then set the value in the inspector when we're back in edit mode so it's actually saved. Also, to change the speed of the hover animation, we can have another float variable that we multiply the time by inside of the scene. Again, we can update this value in the game to see how it affects the movement of our cube. And with that script on the one hand and our previous animation done visually on the other hand, we now have a way more catchy collectible to put anywhere in our games and grab the player's attention. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and that you learned a few things to give some life to your game collectibles thanks to animations. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you have other ideas of Unity tricks that you'd like to learn, don't hesitate to leave a comment, and I'll see if I can make a tutorial on that topic. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon for more videos on coding and games.